When considering the most influential watches in the history of horology, we tend to immediately look back to the 20th century for its collection of many firsts in the area of timekeeping innovation. But in the year 2001, we saw the release of a watch that was a pioneer of the industry by way of the adoption of the then controversial material of silicon, and then the beautiful absurdity of how it indicated the time. In this video, we look at a recent update to one of the most insane and influential watches of all time, the Elise Nardin Freak. Let's jump in. <music> So if you're into watches like the Freak that are certainly out there and are looking at unique executions of watch design, I'd recommend checking out our unique watches article, looking at some of the most out there designs in the world of watchmaking that really push forward the sense of creativity. One of the watches I'll call out in that article is the Ludovic Ballard upside down. This watch is absolutely nuts. Each hour marker is on its own independent disc, which has a normal orientation that's upside down. And once that hour changes, that corresponding disc featuring that hour will do an instantaneous 180 degree turn right side up. If you find watches like this interesting, I'll link to the full article in the description down below. So there are a few in the industry that rival the level of ingenuity of this timepiece. Yet to truly understand how much this watch contributed to the industry, we have to look back to the year 2001. At the turn of the millennium, watch brands were still in a period of restabilization, following the last couple of decades of uncertainty brought forth by the quartz crisis. At this stage, UN was a manufacturer with over a century and a half watchmaking prowess and was under the leadership of industry legend Rolf Schneider, who purchased the company back in the 1980s and was quick to get the brand back on track with bold creations. With excellent foresight, Schneider was able to sense the underlying longing for something different that would break through from the more orthodox period of watch design. And in 2001, they launched a product that now comes to represent a new chapter in high watchmaking overall with the Ulysse Nardin Freak. The watch wowed both consumers and the industry by way of its unconventional way of telling the time and being the first brand to famously use silicon. And almost all at once, there was a wave of new concepts and brands that came onto the scene, such as the Harry Winston Opus series, led by a CEO you may have heard of at the time, Max Booser, and the launch of the now industry titan Richard Mill that same year. But now 22 years later, UN unveiled the Freak One, an updated variant that upholds the watch's core ethos for a new generation of fanfare. For those of you who have never seen this watch before, the natural reaction at this stage is trying to just figure out what exactly is going on. The Freak, since its conception, is known for having no crown and for the movement to be on full display from the front. But what makes this watch truly remarkable is that the movement's placement also serves as the way to indicate the time. With the gear train being affixed by the way of a bridge on the minute hand, being topped off with a silicon balance wheel and balance spring sitting at the far end for all to see and will rotate with the passing time with the help of a carousel. The utilization of silicon in watchmaking has become essentially an industry standard for its resiliency, anti-magnetic properties, and its ability to extend servicing intervals. However, it is important to note again that the Freak was the first watch to popularize this material, paving the way for its adoption. Jumping back to the dial's outermost perimeter, we have a ring machined into tiny teeth utilized by the central module to rotate the minute hand around the dial once per hour. Just within, we have a slightly raised chapter ring of sorts offering printed 12, 3, 6, and 9 numerals, along with applied rose gold indices that are neatly faceted. At the center beneath the minute hand is the central surface aiding in the rotation with the hour hand resting on the grooved disc in bold white to match the brand text with a limited supply of luminescent material being offered on the unconventional hands. Yet what ties this watch all together even further is how you set the time. Taking a closer look at the six o'clock side of the case, we have a prominent tab engraved with Freak that when pushed up, unlocks the rotating faceted bezel that is constructed from rose gold. When unlocked, rotating the bezel in either direction actually rotates the central dial and allows the user to adjust the hands to the right time. Now for me, the call to own a mechanical watch in general is one partially motivated by trying to connect to these romantic machines. And by going in this ingenious way of setting the time, you almost feel 
more connected and you feel this tangible element to the passing of time, it makes it just a little bit more of a personal connection rather than using a conventional crown. Once the correct time is set, you simply lock the tab back into place and you're ready to rock and roll to continue wearing. Despite how this watch's movement is on front display, it is important to talk about this movement on a more detailed level in general, including what is in view on the reverse side. Now turning the freak over, we have one of the more unique caliber executions in recent decades with their in-house UN240, an evolution of the former UN250, the first automatic Freak caliber released in 2018. As you'd imagine, the UN240 carries forward the Freak family's hosts of technical innovations, while also making room for some updates in the process. Although this watch does offer self-winding, to manually wind the caliber, you will need to engage the case back and press down to rotate. Similar to the bezel rotation, the action to wind feels almost more intimate, although requiring much more work in the process to get the necessary rotation. Rather than a conventional mainspring contained with a proportionally smaller barrel, the Freak's mainspring encompasses almost the entire higher diameter of the caliber, making one revolution every 12 hours while being directly connected to the center pinion to what the brand calls its orbital flying one hour carousel with its exposed balance and gear train on the minute hand. Automatic winding is also very different. It's carried out by the proprietary grinding system, which allows the thickness of the watch to remain balanced and improves the winding efficiency compared to a conventional rotor, as even slight rotation can wind the gigantic mainspring, enabling an impressive power reserve of 90 hours while oscillating at three hertz, 21,600 vibrations per hour. And seeing this kind of gyration and happen with this grinding mechanism is pretty unique. And jumping back to the front, the escapement's construction deviates from the norm, offering a double wheel direct impulse construction, as opposed to a traditional Swiss lever. True to original form, innovative materials are all over this piece and this movement. You have a balance wheel impressively constructed from a single piece of silicon, and escapement components being made of a material known as diamacil. This is a synthetic diamond material that improves durability while also marking the greatest areas of novelty in this new caliber. And in the process demonstrates UN savviness and really testing out different material types. In terms of its general specifications, the UN240 operates at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz. It does feature hand winding, as we mentioned, and a power reserve of 90 hours. Measuring in at a significant 44 millimeters in diameter, 13.6 millimeters thick, and a 52.2 millimeter lug to lug, the Freak One's dimension set certainly adds up to a larger watch on wrist. That said, the relatively slender thickness for the level of complexity combines with the use of the DLC coated titanium to create a lighter and altogether unique wearing experience that should work well on more wrists than you might expect. But given that this watch is the Freak, subtlety in look and wear was clearly never a central focus in the design process. Other than a very slender bevel that is highly polished running the length of the case and sneaking in under the rose gold bezel, the rest of the titanium central case is satin finished, leaning into more of a combination of muted and more ornate looks that works well in this instance. On the nine o'clock side, a small rectangular rose gold plaque is fitted almost flush into the central case and engraved with the watch's serial number. As a note, despite the sportier looks on display and the maritime history associated with UN, the Freak One only offers 30 meters of water resistance and also specifically mentions avoiding showering and exposure to water in its manual. Set between 22 millimeter lugs, the Freak One is supplied on a rubber strap with a molded ballistic weave texture, with this particular rubber compound being composed of 30% recycled rubber and tapering down to 18 millimeters with a machine finished buckle in matching DLC titanium, topping off the details of a watch that is all about them. So to unpack looking at the Freak, it's a watch that's hard to really pinpoint in terms of its positioning, but I wanna close with a quote from the great leader of the brand, Rolf Schneider, who passed away in 2011. In one of his last interviews with SJX, he had this to say, quote, I feel as an independent, I think we have done without exaggeration, incredible work in pioneering, opening doors, inspiring other artistic people in the industry. The Freak has changed the landscape of watchmaking, of aesthetics and watches. Nobody has dared to make a movement like that, but aesthetically, others got inspiration. We've contributed a lot to the industry and we don't think just for ourselves. We are very open to share. To state it plainly, the Freak is an absurd watch that is not entirely practical. It is large, it has limited water resistance, it looks crazy, and it is expensive at $70,000 for this gold and titanium example. But make no mistake, 
With a name like The Freak, a term that is defined as a very unusual and unexpected event or situation, what makes this watch special now as well as what made it special in 2001 is its daring creativity to do something imaginative. Going this path is never going to lead to a result that is going to be for everyone. But without The Freak, the current state of the watchmaking world at this tier of watchmaking and high horology unquestionably would look a lot different. And if you are a watch fan, regardless of your taste, that deserves a tip of the cap. Now this watch is not entirely something that is for me, but there's an element of wonder around this piece that I think is very unique. It's not going to be for everybody, quite frankly, both in its looks, its styling, its price to go along with it. But what this watch was able to do in 2001 was an expression of creativity. It showed that you don't have to always go for the safe route. And in a world of watchmaking where it's become more and more about that and not pushing things forward to a degree, especially in an antiquated industry, that is the watches, it's always refreshing to look at a watch like this and something that is truly unique. But all right guys, that's my video looking here at the new Ulysse Nardin Freak. What is your thought on this watch, this collection? It's been around for over 20 years now, so it's not necessarily a new concept for this watch design, but even decades later, it still feels fresh and it's so different compared to what's out there. But I'd love to see your take down below. What do you think? Do you like the freak? Do you not like the freak? Uh, leave some comments down there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. Also check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. Also, how we're able to fund all of our productions here is through selling watches. So if you are in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. We know you can buy a watch essentially anywhere nowadays, but it allows us to keep doing what we're doing. And we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.